Hey guys, Shanti Tier here from Shanti's Design. I'm going to be teaching you guys today a little bit of blending techniques on a finished project that I call the Peacock, the Pretty Peacock. Uh, we're going to be doing it on this piece back here. I will have some photos, full length photos for you guys to kind of see this with the mirror that goes with it. Um, so we're going to be using a combination of different paint colors, some royal blue, some green, um, purple, black, and gold. We're going to kind of completely transform this piece um, and give it the shades of like a peacock. Um, and that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys today. This isn't a very difficult technique. It is a little bit time consuming though, and it does take a little bit of practice. So if you guys will just stay with me though, I'll walk you through every single step. We're going to start with um, going over our products here. Um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is cleaning it. In this spray bottle here, I have some Jasco TSP. It's a concentrated cleaner. You put it in with um, water in the ratio that is recommended to you on the back of the bottle. And then I just put it in a spray bottle so that I can spray it on and wipe it off of my piece. Um, I like to use this one and the other one that I love using too, it's pre-mixed and this is from the Maison Blanche Paint Company. And this is called Clean and Prep. Um, this I usually use on dirtier size or dirtier pieces that are, you know, wooden and like really old and maybe they were in a house where someone smoked and there's a lot of stuff in there you need to get off. Um, but you can do light cleaning with it too, but this is more of a heavy duty cleaner. I'll probably use both of these today to get the piece cleaned. So I've got my cleaners here and rags. I have the rags for two reasons. One is for cleaning. One will be for waxing at the end of the project. And I'll have another one, which I need to grab um, during the process of when I'm kind of doing a color wash with some of the colors, I'll have a damp rag to kind of wipe off excess. So you need rags. Of course you need your paints. Um, I've got a couple colors here from Dixie Belle that we may be incorporating. I've got Mermaid Tail and the Gulf. One is like a, you know, more of a greenish tone, teal, and then I've got a really light, soft blue. Um, and then I've got, you guys can't probably see it here, but I've got a dark cobalt blue. That's gonna go on the entire body of the piece. Um, and I didn't pick up any special paint since it's just my base coat. And I'll be turning this into chalk paint anyway with some calcium carbonate powder. Um, I'll post the recipe up for you guys. There are tons of recipes online for you to take regular latex paint and transform it into chalk paint. But I'll put mine up so that you guys can see the specific ratios that I use. Um, and then I have these small sample pots here of a purple, um, that's an amethyst purple. Um, and I'll take photos of these lids too in case you guys wanna get these exact colors. I have a green, it's like a Kelly green, but a little bit lighter than your average Kelly green. And then we have some gold, I have gold paint. This is something you pick up from craft stores. It's the deco art line. You can find it at Hobby Lobby. You can find it at Michael's. You know, nothing difficult for you to track down. And then um, I have my gilding wax. I'm gonna use this to rub over some of the details, um, kind of pop out different areas, make them shine and have a metallic sheen. I've got another type of spray bottle here. This is what I'm gonna be using when I'm doing blending. Um, the bottle says zoom mist, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I just like to use these smaller bottles that give out a really fine finish. I don't know if you guys can see. When you spray that across, you don't get a ton of big drips. You get a nice, fine, even mist, and that works better for whenever you're trying to blend colors because big drips can cause problems when they're wetting up the paint too much. So we've got that, and then of course, let me grab these guys. Just paint brushes. I've got some chip brushes, which I'll probably be using just with the wax, maybe with my um, gold. I've got a couple different size brushes for when I'm blending. I've got my two purties that are two inches, and they're the angled tip. And then I've got, these are just craft brushes that you'll find in like art packs that you get from the craft store for painters. Um, so a couple of different brush sizes, and we're gonna go ahead and use these products and go ahead and get started. I will post up, like I said, that chalk paint recipe for you guys, because um, that's what I'm about to do right now. I'm just gonna mix that up and get my product ready to go. Then we'll come back in a bit closer so you guys can see me get to work, and we're gonna turn this into a pretty peacock. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm just clean, starting to clean off this piece to get it prepped for paint. Um, I didn't remember how dirty I left the top of this. I left it out in my shop for a long time and did several different projects on top of it, so there was more dirt and paint left on top of it than I thought. So I am gonna go ahead and wind up using the Prep and Clean for this. It's a little bit stronger than my regular TSP. So I'm using that. I've already got some spray here on the top. Um, and I went ahead and grabbed one of my scrapers too because I have some pretty thick blobs of paint sitting on top of this. I'm gonna kind of chisel off with this. It's a plastic one so that I don't scrape anything. I use metal ones sometimes, but on pieces I don't wanna add any more scratches to, I just grab a plastic one. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just gonna start loosening up my big chipped edges um, and it's fine for the product to be sitting on this for a little while um, you actually want to give it 30 minutes to a full minute before you even wipe so that you can soften you know the things that are stuck up on your piece 
So you guys, I'm just gonna get this top scraped up and clean it up, get the piece clean, and then it's gonna be ready for paint. Gross. That's all that I got off of this. <laughs> it's pretty dirty. So I'm gonna do it one more time on the top and then go ahead and do the rest of the body. Hey everyone, I'm back. I have gotten this piece completely cleaned up. It's dry. Um, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and start in with my um, base color, which is gonna be this deep cobalt blue. I have converted it into chalk paint. I mentioned that to you guys earlier. I'm gonna um, post a picture of the recipe. Um, I usually do about a quarter cup of the calcium carbonate powder to every 16 ounces of paint. Um, and I kind of move it around from there depending on the consistency that I want. Um, I've got a couple brushes here. My big brush for covering big areas, and then just to make sure I get into all these lines and nooks and crannies, I have a small brush. Make sure I brush it on in there. I'm not going to panic on this first coat about getting it on perfectly. It's the base coat, and I'm going to be going over it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a layer down so that my second coat will stick better. So I've still got my paint here in the mixing cup. I'm just going to work from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip my brush. And I like to do the drawers first, and then I'll pop them out um, and do the body afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead and start getting some of this blue paint on here and I have it kind of thin. Um, the thinner the paint, the less brush strokes you get. Okay, you guys, so I've got the blue on all the drawers. They're drying up a little bit before I bother moving them out. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get some of these details on the foot. Let me push this in, make sure you guys can see that. On the foot down here, I've got some detailing, and up here I've got some detailing, and then I wanna make sure I get paint completely covering all of this. So I'm gonna put my big brush away into my paint saver. If you guys haven't seen these before, these paint brush covers, they're amazing. You really need to get some. Um, holds your brush and keeps it wet in between uses so you don't have to go and rinse the brush out in the middle of everything unless you just feel like it. These guys will really keep you um, keep your brushes moist um, so you can just pop them back out and use them whenever you please. So I have several of these around the house all the time and I use them on the regular. So I just want to mention those to you guys really quickly. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take some paint here. Okay guys, so I've got two coats on my drawers. I went ahead and popped them out of the piece. Um, I'm letting them dry over there as well as the mirror. I haven't shown it much, but it is getting worked on at the same time as these pieces. Um, so what I'm about to do is show you guys brushing on the top. So we've already got this spot here where I had dripped some paint. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start brushing there. I'm gonna dip my brush in here. And I'm gonna start spreading along here. I'm standing behind the piece so that I can um, kind of show you guys better. And also it kind of helps me either stand behind it or beside it. I'm not using too much paint because I want thin coats and I don't want any brush strokes. What I'm doing is keeping my hand pretty level and I'm gripping the brush um, so that I can just kind of brush lightly. I'm applying pressure when I need you to spread the paint, but I'm going all the way from side to side, keeping the line as straight as I can. The way I usually do it is keeping my body pretty stiff and just using my arms. And then at the end, I know you guys can't see my face, but you can kind of see my body. I kind of rock like this. Okay, so we have got two coats over the entire body of the piece. I'll flash to a photo so you guys can just kind of see um, that everything's been painted so far. I've got some of the drawers done, and this is the part of the technique I'm about to show you guys. I put the two base coats of blue down because I wanted blue to be the vast majority of the piece. I'm gonna be leaving a lot of blue out, uh, but on the front of the drawers from my actual peacock design, I wanted to blend some blues and greens. Um, so I've got my paint colors here. I've got my Kelly green, kind of limeish green here. Then I've got my mermaid tail from Dixie Bell Paint. It's a really pretty turquoise, aqua, greeny type color. And then I've got um, the other shade called the Gulf from Dixie Bell Paint. And that's like a really, really light teal. Um, and that's the next one that I'm using. So I'm gonna combine these three 
using my three small brushes and of course my spray bottle that just has some water in here there's nothing but water so to get started on this first of all since I'm doing blending I find it works best to go ahead and use water and your base coat the one that you had for your entire piece as a whole um, to get you started so I'm gonna pull this out of it and I'm gonna miss this drawer let me make sure this is spraying there we go I'm gonna miss this whole drawer with some water water really helps you to do the blending a little bit better I'm gonna take my paint and I'm gonna go ahead and give the drawer another coat I'm going to set this big brush down over here in my brush saver. Give me just a second. I'm not really going to be using that one anymore. And the first color I'm starting with, if you look at the other drawers that are out here, I started with the green and then I worked my way into the turquoise mermaid tail. And then I finished with the gulf, the lightest blue color here in the center. So what I'm going to do is take my green here and I'm going to dip my paintbrush into it. You want a bit, but not too much. You can keep adding more. It's best to start with less and add more if you need to. So I'm gonna start with this green and not minding these outer edges because I can go back and touch those up with blue if I want to later. I'm gonna start blending this green into the blue that's around the trim of my drawer. I'm gonna start blending that in. Get a little bit more and continue blending it over. If you start feeling too much pulling, like the paint's not mixing properly for you, you can always add another mist of water. I'm gonna wait here a second and see if I can get this all to spread out. So I had nothing on my little brush before, just, um, just that green paint, and I'm blending it into the blue that I put on as the base coat for the drawer. Okay. It's looking good to me so far. It could spread a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna spray my tiny brush, give it a couple of mists just to moisten it so that I can spread this green around a little better. And what I'm gonna do is stay on the outer edge and kind of work my way towards the inside of the corners and everything because I want some overlap between this and where I start my next color. So this is blended out nicely for me. I've got it about the same green shade as I have on the other pieces. Make sure I get this corner. Okay. So now I'm gonna put my green brush down and I'm gonna reach for my turquoise color, my mermaid tail. Let me get a little bit of that and I'm gonna start on this one around this edge here, a little bit back into the green, but mostly on this thin line here and coming towards the middle is where I'm gonna be applying this one. So I'm just gonna kind of brush it around in those spots and I'm going to start let me hold it still I'm going to start blending it in it's my second color and you can always add more if you need to you guys don't panic just start with a little bit if you need to add more later it's going to be okay and you can see I got a little bit of this here over here I can fix it right now or I can wait until later it's really up to you um, but if you spill another color somewhere it shouldn't be, just take your brush that had the green on it and blend that back out. No panicking. Just keep on blending this color in. I'm gonna kind of move up into the green a little bit with my turquoise. And I feel like it needs more down here. I feel like it's naked and could use a little bit more turquoise down there. So I'm gonna re-dip my brush and just get a hair more and start kind of blending that down into there. Just keep on working it around. And now you guys see maybe too why we moistened the drawer so that the paint stays a little bit more wet while we're working. So I'm gonna keep working this in here. Just keep blending it out. Kind of feathering the edges a bit. And if it's feeling dry, which is feeling a little bit dry to me again, I'm gonna wet my brush. I wet the drawer the first time, then after that I try wetting the brush first, and if it really needs more, then I'll moisten the whole drawer again and just rework everything. But if you can avoid that, it's good to, because if you get the paint too wet, you're still not gonna get the look that you were going for. Okay, so we got some pretty decent shading going on here. 
from the green fading into the turquoise. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my final color. Let me just finish blending. And this is a no wrong or right. It may take you a couple of tries to where you get comfortable doing this, but um, you really just have to give it a go and keep practicing with it. So now we're taking our third color, this gold, and <clears throat> I'm gonna kinda tap it in the center and then I'm gonna start spreading it. Okay, I'm gonna start working it through the middle of my piece and spread it out towards the outer edges. I'm gonna go down into the turquoise um, and blend it out as best I can through the center. And then if I feel like the line is too harsh after, I'll grab my turquoise brush again and use it to finish my blending out. Cause I'm getting a little bit light over there. I'm not loving that, but I'm not gonna panic about that right now. I'm just gonna keep on blending my center out so I don't have too harsh of a line. I want some separation, but not too much. Not too much of a straight line. So the center is looking good blended to me now. But I've got a little bit too much blue here. So what I'm gonna do is moisten my turquoise brush and come back in with it. So let me set this gold brush down. I'm gonna moisten my brush here. Give it a few good sprays because on my mermaid tail, not too much. And I'm gonna go ahead and come back in here one more time with my turquoise color, kind of brushing it around where I want it to go. And I'm gonna start blending this out again. I'm going to take my large blue brush again and I'm going to dip it lightly and remove the vast majority of the paint off of it because I don't want any drips or runs, but I do want my brush moistened with paint. And at the end of everything, I'm just going to come in here, you guys, and clean these edges up because I want that pattern to start abruptly, the greens and the gradient color. I'm just putting this technique on the drawers. Um, I think it's best to start with drawers. If you feel really comfortable later on, you could try doing it on the big sides or on the large top of the piece. But for starting out this technique, little drawers that have details like this and trim, they're perfect beginner practice, you know, section of a piece to do. So um, we're gonna go ahead and leave this to dry, move on to the other drawers. Y'all stay with me. So the drawers are done, you guys, and now we're gonna start adding in the bit of purple I told you guys about earlier. I've got my amethyst here, carefully. So there's the purple we're gonna work with that we're adding into the piece. I've got that, my paintbrush, and a wet rag. So what I'm gonna be doing now is giving a little bit of a purple highlight on the inner recesses of this detailing because we're gonna go in with the gilding wax after we seal and everything to pop out these details with gold. But I want the background of this to have a kind of purpley color um, because I want the look of a peacock and the ones with the dark blue like the cobalt I've chosen they usually have like a little bit of purple in the plumes of their feathers so I'm gonna start putting this not worrying about where all I get it because again I can touch up any area I don't want it on with um, my blue paint after I'm gonna rub it into the sides and make sure I've completely covered this whole region right here with the purple paint. And then I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess out of it. So I'm just making sure I get it all covered. And this goes on light, but it does dry a darker color, more of like a royal purple. So that I've got it on, I'm gonna take my wet rag and I'm for sure gonna pull it off of these blue pieces here. Not all of it, but a bit. And I'm gonna kind of wiggle the rag in and around in here making sure I leave purple, but that it's not too prominent, but I want a purple, you know, I want a pop of it within this piece. So I left a bit at the top and through the middle, 
I'm going to go ahead and since I've got my wet rag anyway, I'm going to scrub the purple out from where I don't want it right now. And whatever doesn't come off, I'll clean up with a brush in this blue color. But there we go. So we've got a little bit of the purple kind of down in the corners and the crevices here in that little cubby hole. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to leave this one blue, but coming on down, I'm going to be putting a bit of purple in here. So you guys, we've got the piece completely painted. What I'm going to be doing now is applying my black chalk wax. Um, this is a product from Maison Blanche. It's lime wax. It's in the black chalk color. I'm going to be putting this over the entirety of my piece because I want to kind of subdue the colors and tone them down a little bit. But everything seems a bit more melted and sort of, you know, um, just brought together a little bit better than it is right now. Um, and also, I want the blue to be bright, but I don't want it to be quite as loud as it is right now. Um, Lime wax is a little bit different from like your sheer waxes that you usually apply. Um, we're going to put this on the drawer, move it around kind of where we want it, leave it in the recesses and crevices, um, and then we're going to leave it sitting for 45 minutes and then come back to buff. So let me just show you guys how we're going to do that. Oh, I'll up here. I'll do the top last. So I'm going to pull out a drawer here. Just set this in here. And then I have my black chalk wax here inside this can. A little bit goes a long way. Um, so you just load up your chip brush and you just start brushing it on. It's going to tone all the colors down a shade or two. Um, it can be more dramatic if you leave it on for longer, but I'm not going to leave it on as long as you could. Um, I'm going to be wiping a lot of the excess off right away um, because the longer you let it sit and penetrate, the deeper it will darken up your color. So I'm just going to put it on and then wipe it off and do my piece in sections. Um, and that'll give me the look that I'm wanting. I'm gonna keep rubbing it here. Make sure you get it in your, all your corners and your cracks and your lines. If you have a piece that's got a lot of detail on it, like this one, you just wanna make sure that you get it everywhere. And don't forget your outer edges and sides. Go around here, make sure I get this side. Make sure I get that top line there. And just make sure it's touching everywhere on the entire drawer surface. Okay. So everything's got black wax on it right now. So now that it's on there, what I'm going to do is go ahead and move it around. I'm going to wipe it um, with a light touch. Just kind of drag my rag around, move in the wax so that it stays in my corners, but it's not heavy in my highlighted areas. Take it off the drawer here, off the edges. And what this is going to do is when we buff it up, it's going to give us a nice sheen. Um, and everything's going to look just a little bit more put together. So there's that drawer, and there's my second drawer. Uh, I'm going to continue doing this around to all the drawers and then over the entire body of the piece, just brushing it on in sections. I'll do this top line here above the drawers as a section, wipe it down, go down that side. Wipe it down out of the nooks and crannies. I'll show you a little close-up on that just to show you how much wax I leave around details. Um, and we'll get the whole piece waxed, leave it 45 minutes, and come back to buff. Then we'll be ready to apply our gilling wax, and the piece will be complete. I'll also be bringing in the mirror to show you guys. Um, I know I haven't shown it much so far. Like I mentioned earlier, it's over here right behind me. It's just painted solid blue. I'm going to leave it alone and black wax it. Um, maybe put some gilding on the detail in the center of it. And that's going to be about it. We'll be completely done with the piece. So you guys stay with me, and we'll be getting to that shortly. Okay guys, it's time for one of the final steps. I had my wax sitting on my piece for about 45 minutes. When it finished sitting, um, I started to buff it with a soft cloth. I've got all the black wax here. You'll have some residue come off on your rag as you're buffing, that's okay. 
Um, but what you do is you just take a soft rag. I prefer microfiber cloths. These are my favorite kind. They produce a nice sheen. And I just rubbed it over the entire surface, just kind of back and forth, making sure I touched everything, just really rubbing it around. And as you go over it, you'll start to see it shine up. Um, I didn't do a close up on this because it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy to do. It's not very difficult. You just go ahead and just keep buffing it and you'll start to get a nice sheen and then it's ready for you to do the last step, which is gilding. And that's what I'm about to show you guys right now. I have my rub and buff, my gold leaf metallic finish, gilding wax. I'm gonna take a little bit on my fingertip. Just a little bit, not too much. Got a bit there on my finger. And what I'm gonna do is start rubbing it over these details here. I'm not applying very heavy pressure, just kind of letting the wax settle where it wants to and rubbing in circular motions over these details so I can get it all covered, up and down, all over. It's gonna hit the high points and that's what I want. So once it's done, I'll take the same cloth I was using for my black wax and I'll just buff that. This wax isn't one that needs to sit, your, your uh, rub and buff. You can buff it up right after you put it on. Um, you have to be careful not to put it on too heavy though because if you put it on and it's pooled in places, then when you go to rub it, you'll just smear it around and it'll get in areas where you don't want it. So that's why I was saying you take a very small amount and put it on your finger. And then just kind of a rapid buffing motion and you'll get a bit of sheen there. So I'm also gonna take it here in this square area. I've got a little bit on my finger, not too much. I'm gonna come around my line down the sides. And then I like to highlight in corners. So I'm gonna come in a little bit with my finger here in the corner areas around the edges and apply just a bit more and then kind of use the excess that's left on my fingers to spread it around. This is something too that comes with you getting comfortable just via practice. Um, you'll figure out how much you need to put on your finger. I start with the very little because it's always easier to put more of this on than it is to take it off. If you do happen to mess up and you need to get it off, you can take a clear furniture wax, apply it and it'll come right off for you. So I'm just gonna keep on buffing it to shine it up a bit, get some sheen going on it. And I'll be continuing this around the rest of the piece. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see me work as I go. But that is what I'll be doing. Some of your wax will come off. You can decide afterwards if you wanna put it back more or less. It's totally up to you. All right, you guys, and that's gonna be about it. I've got some after photos for you here. We'll put up in just a second. I'm just finishing out this gilding wax. If you guys like this tutorial and you want to see more, um, you can visit my website. It's shantiquesdesign.com. I'm on Facebook as well, at Shantiques Design. Instagram, uh, at Shantiques Design TX. And you can also subscribe to me here on YouTube. And I'll have more videos for you guys in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And again, thanks so much for taking time to watch my video. Bye.